The housing market is something we all talk about, it's something that's always in the media. I'm Peter Monckton, I'm BOQ's Chief Economist, and today I'm going to go through the macro factors that drive the housing market. As you know, there's a lot of factors that drive the housing market. The location, how big the house is. I'm not going to go through those today. As an economist, today I'm going to go through the macro factors. In fact, I'm going to go through five factors today. Interest rates, other government policies, demand for housing, and today I'm just going to talk about population. The fourth one is supply of housing. How many places we're actually building? And the last one, valuation. The first factor I'm going to talk about is interest rates. Interest rates are one of the more important factors for driving the outlook for the housing market. The lower the interest rates, of course it means more people can borrow. Something though, borrowers should watch out for. The main interest rate that people talk about is the one set by the Reserve Bank, the cash rate. They set the cash rate determining upon how the economy actually is going. Right now, the cash rate is at a very low level on a historical basis. So watch out what happens to economic growth and what's happening to the unemployment rate because that will give you an idea of what will be happening to the interest rates. The second thing I'm going to talk about today is other government policies. And this can range things from like taxation to infrastructure, but the main one I want to talk about is other regulatory constraints. Australia has one of the highest household borrowing ratios in the world. And because of that, as an example, regulators in recent times put a cap on the amount investors can borrow to constrain how much our household borrowing rises. So the key thing to watch is how much households borrow, particularly if they borrow a lot more than their incomes. If they borrow a lot more than their incomes, regulators will start to become concerned. The third factor is population growth. The more people there are, the greater demand for its housing. In recent years, Australia has had very strong population growth, and a lot of that up to 2018 has been concentrated in Sydney and Melbourne. No surprises, that's where house price growth has been the strongest up till recent months. So watch out for how strong your population growth is in your city, and that'll give you an indication of how strong demand will be for housing in your city. The fourth factor is the supply of housing. Now we've just gone through the demand of housing. Big population growth, more people want to live in a house. But the supply of housing also matters. We supply more houses, that means there's more places for those people to live in. In recent years, Australia's had a big residential construction boom. We've really increased our supply of houses around the place, which means moderation of house price growth. So watch out for how many places have been built around near you. The fifth factor is valuation. And in particular, I want to concentrate on house prices relative to incomes. As we know, house prices have gone up a lot in recent years, but our wages haven't gone up anywhere near as much. The higher those house prices go relative to wages, the less likely people are going to be able to afford a home. House prices has been a particularly big issue in recent years in Sydney, less of a problem in some other parts of the country. And hopefully, wages growth will pick up. The stronger the economy is, the more likely that wages will go up. So I've just gone through the macro factors that drive the housing market. If you're thinking about buying a home, always also look at what's happening in your local market and make sure you get financial advice that fits your needs. 